everybody. Um, Senor Agostino has just arrived. You'll remember last episode, we've almost finished off our little porch. It starts to come along very nicely there. Um, and we'll be working our way up later um, to build the extension at this part of the house. But for now, what we want is Senor Augustinio to be able to come in here to put mud here. But this big pile of plastic, and it is literally a pile of plastic, um, well, it's rubber actually, is our bio pool membrane. So we're waiting for the water to get out of the bio pool so that we can go in there, dig it a little bit deeper and then start building up the walls and making it super cool. It's going to be a bio swimming pool. But first we've got to get, well, that's just waiting for that to happen. Um, and it, it looks like Senor Agostinio can't get his tractor past our plastic. Joel's on it. Look at that for ingenuity, love it. Well done, Joel. The boys are out, ready and watching. So later on as well, Senor Agostinho, maybe next week is gonna come along and he's gonna turn over this soil one last time. Um, and the reason why we're gonna turn it over one last time isn't because we want to turn over the soil, it's just because we wanna flatten it out. You remember um, back in the olden days when I was making a lawn in the other field, just down there, the first thing happened, Senor Agostinho came and tilled the land and then I stomped it flat. I don't think I'll be stomping this, um, this land here flat, not right away, but I just, I think it's probably very beneficial to flatten it a little bit because it's very high at this end and very low down here. And so when it rains, all the water kind of floods down in that direction, it goes really soggy in here. Yeah. Plan is to plant lots of olive trees in this area here. So we kind of want it to be a little bit more level. So, um, so Senor Agostinho, he's going to come and level out that land um, before we start planting olive trees. He's on his way. Quick, 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 out of the way. <laughs> quick, 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 out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. <laughs> Little man's faster than, than I am already. All right. I know what you're all saying. What are you doing putting the rows next to a walkway? Everybody's gonna walk. Is it gonna be prickly? Is it gonna be we were having a chuckle with Joelle the other day about how many wheelbarrows this would take if we were to try and do it ourselves. It would be like a hundred wheelbarrows. I think it's going to be like 10 trips for the tractor and they will be there. Anyway, what is your plan with the prickly rose right across the walkway? She asked. Of course we're going <laughs> to tie it up. Train it. Train it. Yeah, so it's out of the way. Good that soil. Gosh, you boys have had quite the day. Is that fun? <laughs> Exciting. If I find a potato in there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Come on then. Come inside. Say bye, Dad. Bye. Thanks, Joao. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, obrigada. Bye. Bye. Look at this fair little beastie. Say ciao. Bye. bye. That's it. Um, we have finished, and that is the end of a really great day. I'm so thrilled. I've just been sweeping up to try and get rid of some of that mud. Um, a futile attempt when it rains, of course, it sticks to shoes. We've got two little boys that like to run in puddles, trying to make sure it doesn't go in the house, but it's gonna go in the house anyway. Um, but there we go, we've begun the project. We've got ourselves the start of a porch. It's not finished yet. There's definitely work to be done there. I wanna add in the 45s. I wanna secure it stronger against the, the stone wall as well. And maybe I was thinking, you know, down on the outside deck, we've got those old barrel circles. Maybe we put a barrel circle on this side there so that we can grow stuff around that too. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Next, we'll be, uh, we'll be carrying on a little bit higher up and starting to think about how we can make a semi-permanent structure, something that's got use and value when it's no longer allowed to be there. Got some ideas. All right, I'll see you in the morning, probably in about five seconds from now. There you go, that was your five seconds. For us, it's been a long time. Um, Tara's off in the tiny house right behind me. There you go, um, lights on. She's doing some editing and some tidying out some work. I've been left with the kids this morning, which is great fun. Um, we've had a couple of uh, false starts with Sawyer behind me, but we're ready now. Um, Crusoe's got his bike, he's having some fun, and we're waiting for the tractor to arrive so that we can start leveling out that front piece of land. Tractor will be here just shortly, so we'll, um, we'll go and have a ride of the bicycle and we'll check in with you as soon as the tractor arrives. With that. Have you broken it? Oh, shall I try? Shall I see whether I can fix it? Let's have a look. Crusoe, buddy, can you hold the camera while I fix this? You film me. Yeah. Just, there we go. Don't touch the screen. Is it filming? All right. Come on then, Sawyer. Let's fix this. How does it fix, Crusoe? Like this? Yeah, like that. Okay, I think I got it. I think we're going to need a new one, aren't we? There yeah. we go. Is that done? Yeah. That's done. All right. Off you go, Sawyer. Thanks, Goose. Well done. Good filming, buddy. How was that? Um, a bit bumpy like that. bit bumpy. There's definitely a sense that the weather is changing at the moment. We've got big winds going around um, and we're expecting rain really soon. We haven't had any rain for, well, a couple of weeks and before that we were in India so we had no rain at all. I think that's Senor Gostinho, yes he it is. made it. Well, I thought you were going for a nap, buddy. I thought you were having a nap. No? No nap? The tractor said absolutely not. <laughs> wow. It's starting to rain. Starting to rain. Just left John with the boys to go and um, do some work in the office while the tractor's busy, but I've just noticed my greenhouse is literally falling to pieces with every gust of wind. It's gonna to have to come with a bit up with a better solution. I glued it a while ago, um, but obviously I can't glue the windows, but they just keep popping off. It's driving me crazy. And that back panel, the one back panel just will not stay in. This greenhouse is a real gift for what it brings us, but it's also such a terrible, terrible product. Let me see if I can fix this.
Let's see if that holds. I'm gonna go and take refuge now. Here comes the rain. Okay, so that's the first, I mean, that's pretty heavy turning of the soil. He's gone really deep there. Um, there's a, you know, just to try and get it flat or flatter. And the reason why we want it to be like that is when it rains heavily here in, in Northern Portugal, and it does, it rains heavily. Um, the water is just zooming straight off the, uh, zooming straight off the field and all the way down and it's just not good. So no matter what kind of water capture systems we put in place, I mean, we could put a huge swale there, but you know, digging a big gash in the land there just for a, a maybe a hundred square meters, it, fairly, it doesn't feel like a really sensible thing to do. Hey, Zoya. Um, so anyway, he's, gonna, he's gone away now. Um, Senor Agostino, the tractor dude has gone away. He's gonna go and get his um, tilling machine. He's gonna till it. That'll make it even flatter and then we'll be able to put some olive trees in. But first of all, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's episode, Beam. This is their delicious and pretty incredible dream powder. I'm about to take my second delivery of the stuff. And so when they asked to work with us, I was pretty excited. This is my favorite flavor currently. It's chocolate peanut butter that tastes like a really delicious hot chocolate, but with added ingredients that contribute to a much better night's sleep. It's also sugar and gluten-free, has no artificial flavors, is vegan and keto-friendly. And I particularly like mine with a nice cup of hot milk rather than water. It makes it extra creamy and extra comforting. And it's just a really delicious way to wrap up the day. Sleep is something that can be in short supply with two little boys under the age of three and well, all four of us in one bed. Sleep is as important to our overall well-being as it is to eat healthily or to exercise. What I found on the nights when Beam is how I end my day, my sleep is so much deeper and in between being woken up by the children, it's so much easier to fall back asleep. I also wake up in the morning without that usual kind of grogginess. So the most exciting bit is that if you click on the unique link in our description below or scan the QR code using the camera on your phone now, you'll be able to get 35% off your first try of Dream Powder from Beam. And look forward to a great night's sleep. Who doesn't love that? Like. Um, so uh, interesting, we had uh, a couple of comments, um, I think it was probably a week, 10 days ago now, about why we're building English porches against Portuguese houses, or why actually are we building English porches, English style porches, I'm not saying they're exclusive to England, um, just English style porches in Portugal. It's a really good question, and here's my answer to that. If you drive around, even the local villages around here, you'll see all sorts of building going on, all sorts of houses, including very Scandinavian, sleek form and function type houses. You know, the ones, the boxes with the, with the big windows and like the funny shapes, these kind of really square, angular, maybe Southern German, maybe German type houses as well. Um, they are very, very popular in, in Portugal. And well, one could argue that because they come from a different region of Europe, they don't actually belong in Portugal. I suppose it's the same kind of principle. <coughs> Hello, Sawyer. Are you gonna come and have your two, two, two tuppence yeah. worth too? Yeah, okay, yeah. come on. Oh. You could argue the point that, you know, those kind of houses, those kind of designed houses, because they're not from Portugal, they're not originally Portuguese, don't belong in Portugal as well. That's completely preposterous, of course it is. The point when you're, the point is, I suppose, when you're building and designing and creating your own dreams, they can be whatever you like. You just gotta imagine it and then go ahead and build it. Is it like that? Is it like that? You're gonna say hello to everybody? They're in the camera, say hello. <laughs> So what we're doing here is just building our imagination, basically. You know, these tiles right here, they're from India. We've got Moroccan tiles other places. We're going to be buying Portuguese tiles a little bit later on. It's just one example. This wall design here, 
We actually took that from a trip that we, we made in India in Rohit Gar. That kind of sleek, curved, rounded top. We're going to paint it yellow, I think. Um, so there's going to be all sorts of ideas and all sorts of different designs, different fun ideas that we're going to incorporate into this project here, into this farm, that don't necessarily originate in Portugal. And I think that's a good thing because it's eclectic. It's colourful, it's beautiful, and in my mind, it'll be interesting too. Just to reassure everybody though, the main house, if we get the planning permission, I think we're going to, the main house that we build will be built out of granite, traditional stone from this local area, and will create something that is very, very traditional and Portuguese looking. Um, but for now, let's crack on with this porch, this very Cotswold English looking porch. Um, just finish it off and then I'll see what, so then perhaps we'll go and have a look at those olive trees. What do you think, Soy? Is it, is it time for a nukkuma? Hello, come in a nukkuma. Hey, bedtime. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's put you to bed. I'm going to help you too. You're going to help, Crusoe? Yeah. Cool. Hi, love. Hi, so, darling, you now as well. <laughs> Just got rid of Soya. <laughs> this is looking very snazzy. Yeah, it's looking a light. And I just put a, a beam across here. I was going to put fairy lights, but I like your lights. Well okay. done. <laughs> um, so anyway, got before me. John doesn't love a fairy light. I was. I, I've just been talking about um, why we're building a Cotswold porch in Portugal. Oh, yeah, that was a good. It was an interesting question. Yeah. Um, all right. So what's the plan? Should we go and get some olive trees for our newly ploughed field? Yeah, let's do that. This is something I'm so excited about because I don't know if you remember, if you've been a while, you will remember, but when we, in our first year here, we had these enormous olive trees that had never been pruned or looked after and they were laden with olives and I spent hours trying, while simultaneously looking after a newborn and a toddler, um, to pick all of the olives off the tree. And I got a fair few and we went <laughs> with Armando. <laughs> We went with Armando to the olive press, which runs only between November and January each year to press our olives into olive oil. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing. And I have a dream in my life of having our very own olive oil and olives on this farm. So. And blueberries one and day. And blueberries one day. But the olives for me are, are a big deal. So I want to get some olive trees into that field as soon as we can. Okay. So that they've got lots of time to grow. What size are we going to grow, buy them at? Let's go see what they've got, shall we? Okay. So we thought we'd take you along with us. We often get asked questions about where we do we live and can you show us more about Portuguese life and stuff going on around you? We'll take you with us to this shop and show you what they've got and what it's like to go to a local kind of garden centre or there agricultural two, centre. two shops we should go to. One where the, the olive trees are bigger. Okay. And then the other one. Okay, cool. Okay. We also need to get hay for the chickens. All right. Go. <laughs> All right, so the first place we're going to go to is um, a place that I found a while back when I was looking for a very special cherry tree. Um, thanks, Barbara. It's a place where they grow trees for years and years and years and then they give the trees out um, as adult trees, basically. Um, so you're adopting a tree. Um, not really, but you know what I mean by that. It's like you're not getting a baby tree, you're getting an a grown. Anyway, um, we go there and we'll have a look. The, the, there's two obstacles with buying a tree that's already quite big. The first is um, they're very difficult to transplant. They don't like being moved around growing trees. Um, and so very often, they die. And the second problem, um, or the second obstacle is cost. They're a lot more expensive. Um, I remember watching Jeremy Clarkson's farm. Anybody watch Jeremy Clarkson's farm? And there was this scene where he's making this pond. Um, and he said, you know, I've been smoking um, half a million cigarettes in my lifetime. Uh, I'm definitely not gonna live long enough to see these trees fully grown. So I'm just gonna buy fully grown trees. I get his point. I'm not that old, but... We're also not that rich. We're not that... <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but... You know, Jeremy Clarkson can afford, like, a full-grown tree. He can, yeah. He can. And, and he, he can and afford he can. to mess around with it, and if it dies, whatever. <laughs> that's so true. So, um, so anyway, let's go and have a look at these half-grown trees. Okay. Um, see how much they are, and see whether we can fit them in the car, or see whether they can deliver. 
and if it's a little bit of a problem maybe we maybe we get a mix or maybe we just go for the the young trees but we're nearly there now anyway. okay this is the place um you can see all these big trees uh last time i came here oh they've still got it look at that palm tree darling isn't it great we're not buying a palm tree it's not really a, it's a date yeah but you're isn't? not jeremy clarkson we're not buying a palm it's tree it's so cool and look at these olive trees wow. <laughs> Oh dear. Folks, please, can you watch more of our videos? Can you right. click on all the links? Can look you do everything? Because John's got lofty ambitions. Have a look at this, folks. Aren't those the best olive trees you've ever seen in your life? Wow. How do they even move? I think they know there's not meant to be moved. They are, they definitely. They must be a million euros. Let's go and ask. <laughs> Let's go have a look around. Come on. Handbrake. <laughs> No, 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 there we go, that's what we want. Huh? There we go. There we go. This is what we want, isn't it? Oh, I think so. They look like a decent size. They're great, aren't they? They're not as enormous as I was thinking they were going to be. No, no, but I mean, you know... That's you get tree. olives from that next year. Yeah, that's a tree that's probably going to save four or five years of life. Mm-hmm. Because um, it's ready-made, isn't it? You know? Look at that badger, that looks lovely. They look great. These are the ones that we would be buying in other shops about oh. that big so these ones are a bit bigger look at those I wonder how much those badges are well it's like a price tag on that one there 25 euros no it doesn't it says sold so what do they do they bring a digger and they come and pull it up yeah no yeah. really yeah that's amazing. I love it, man. Shall we get some? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, folks. We're, um, I, you know, if we went home with a tree, an olive tree that looks like that, what do you think Joao would say? He'd be like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, he would just shake his head in dismay. Yeah. How do you grow an olive on an olive tree that looks like a frying pan? <laughs> <laughs> they were, I mean, it would be magnificent in our, in our circle in the middle of our driveway. Wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, yeah. Anyway, should lovely we, little Should we get one for the here. circle? No. The thing is, though, you buy, you buy an olive tree that looks like that, and in half a year's wow. time, it looks like a normal olive tree again. We've had quite a lot of rain this weekend. That's why that's doing that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean... Wouldn't it? In, in the, who's year, got the time it would just to... be like a big bush. Yeah, but that's okay. Beautiful. Anyway, let's, let's, let's go find out how much they are. No, stop it. <laughs> it would look fab. Let's go, to, let's go talk to the girl. I love garden centers. They just make me really happy. This place is like a mass production place. The one time we came here, they've got rows and rows and rows and rows of beautiful flowers and we wanted to get a whole bunch. And um, they said, no, they've all been sold. So like a big hotel was being built. It came and just bought an entire like platform of stuff. So sometimes what you like isn't for sale. Um, this is Claudio. Uh, he's going to show us the olive trees and give us an idea of cost. Look at these. These are amazing. Oh boy, he's getting really carried away, everybody. Help me out here. This is very exciting, folks. We haven't got any prices yet, though. Um, Claudio is um, the owner's son, so we're talking to the right guy. How do you get, like, if we bought this one? Uh, just as it's like an example, yeah. how do you get that out? Like what happens? There's a digger uh, coming. There's a digger, there's a whole truck with a crane. Uh, we have it, so we place it on the truck and we take it home and we plant it. Right. We are, our speciality is to deal with the big size trees and shrubs. And we'll go around the, to the tour and you'll see um, that's, that's so cool. what we are good at. Yeah. So if we, if we take an olive tree like that, how do we move it? And look after it ourselves so you you for example we dig a big hole yep. on the land and then once that big hole is dug you guys come along with a crane and a tractor and you stick it in place yep. Yep. and then we kick the soil in over the roots and then what do we do do we just wait or what's the what's the, <laughs> what's the you, game? you water it and the olive, olive trees are the most recent species out of uh, all of them really it's super easy yeah that's how you can take these kind of big plants and they don't die. Like, oh, those wow. plants are 500 years old on the entrance. So, and you dig them, and, and this one is 300 around. 500 years? Yeah. Yeah. Darling, you're not Jeremy Clarkson, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> 500 years old? I don't think we've got a bank balance. Okay, just, just out of curiosity, so that, that tree right there. Um, this one was sold for 5,000. 
5,000 euros. euros. Yeah. Wow. But it's 300 years old. Yeah, around. You can never estimate for sure because it also depends on where they grow. Okay. So, Have you guys been growing them here? <laughs> no, no, no. That is <laughs> such a daft <laughs> question, Mike. <laughs> where did it we come go? From? Claudio's not 500 years old. <laughs> I know he's not. But where did it come from? Uh, south of Portugal. So, because there are productions and they have to lift them and um, to renew the productions. And so we go first, pick the more ornamental ones, bring them here. They grow for a couple, two, a couple, two, three, four years, depends. Do the crown shape for the bone size or whatever we want to do with it. So that, that's that, so fun. How amazing. Yeah. That is so cool. cool. I might ask dark questions, but I bet I'm not the only one thinking the dark question. You might be darling. Like Imagine that in the middle of the circle. It would be magnificent. Yeah, wouldn't it? I mean, that's an entrance. Things like this are really know, important. It is important. I wonder though, I mean, obviously we wouldn't, like if, if we did it, we, we want to build a big house. So there's going to be works traffic and things all coming, mm. isn't it? So it's mm. not something you want to put in like next week. Or is it? I don't know. I mean, I, my, I'm envisaging the works traffic going down the dirt road, not really down the cobble road. Okay. I think the crane is going to be on that side as well. So, but we'll see. I think probably what we'll have to do is build a new ramp and all sorts of stuff, re-landscape that corner. They are, they, I mean, they're, what, it would be an extraordinary privilege to have a tree that old and that special mm. in place on our farm. Yeah. You know, it's something that we don't really have on the farm. It would be incredible. Let's think about it. How many years worth of fruit would we have to produce in order to make the money back on that? I mean, a lot. Crusoe <laughs> might eventually make some money on it. He's going to be around a hundred years. You could get into all sorts of discussions about how it increases the value of your property, etc, 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 doesn't it? Mm, that's true, that's true. Okay, Claudia, how much are these ones here? A little bit more realistic. Yeah. Alright, so Claudia's just said that these are already producing olive trees, so they would be a good, good choice. I mean, we're looking at getting 10 anyway, straight up. Yeah. Um, uh, olive trees grow so slowly you know if we buy a small olive tree that's kind of like knee height waist height for 10 euros 15 euros is probably what we would buy it at the local store it's gonna be three or four years until it reaches this size 500 years until it reaches that <laughs> size um, so you know there is something for me anyway kind of important about getting some kind of almost not instant gratification but like I think the word would be a head start a head start yeah on this whole thing so Claudia so they start at 15 okay something like this yeah mm -hmm. then 35 and then 45 okay so the difference in the plot size uh, and how, okay. how how old is the biggest one there that the approximately it would be four or five Years old. Four or five years old. No. Okay. So that's a five year head start, guys. You know, um, that feels like a good head start, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, um, I'm going to talk with Claudio. Shall we talk with Claudio yeah, now yeah, and, yeah. and see whether we, we can get yeah. something? Yeah. Cool. All right. We've decided we're going to go for five of the taller, um, taller trees, um, five of the five year old trees. So it's going to be a couple of hundred euros. I, I'm I'm really keen to get that head start and get the farm feeling like it's um, it, it's sort of a producing useful farm. Um, look at those, 500 years old. They're amazing. Um, I'm so pleased I, I I found this place. I actually found this place about a year ago, um, and I've been popping in and out and just looking around. But wonderful. So we're off to go and see some other trees which are about 50 years old. Okay. Um, but it's about a kilometre away, so we have to drive. Right. Um, I didn't know this place with like this kind of speciality, isn't it? Great. So where are you? Um, where, where do you sell most of your trees to? Mainly to Germany, Netherlands, and the UK. Okay. Uh, also to Portugal and Spain, but okay. our main market, seventy percent, will be around these really? three countries. Yes. Wow. Okay. So if you're in the UK and you want an olive tree, yeah, come to this. Like Forty-five, yeah. fifty years old. Forty-five, fifty years yeah. old. You see the bark is starting to, starting to um, grow old bark now from the bottom. See yeah. the difference between well, the, the first ones we saw, yeah. all wrinkly, this yeah. is young, and these are in the transition. So they start from the bottom to top um, with the, the old bark. And how, how much is a tree like that 
costing 40, 50 years old? Around 600, 700. 600. Depends on the tree itself. Okay. Okay. So this assortment, let's yeah. say around 600. Yeah. So, so. Gardening was brilliant. All right. Um, this trip's turning out to be a bit more than we, we thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> we're going to go and have a look now at how they how they do the trees, how they transplant the trees, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, um, I hope everybody's enjoying this. We are. Yeah, yeah. Great. I think I'm, I'm, I, I bet loads of you are loving this. Yeah. A bit different from a normal newbies um, video, but. Oh, they got some geese. Ah, here we go. These are going to Switzerland. These are going to Switzerland. This is our nickel, so I will see them nickel. So cool. We're wrapping up trees over there. And what kind sure of trees? Sorry? What kind are they? Jap Japanese maples. Maples, okay. Do you know what's interesting is how small the, the root ball is. Yeah, yeah. So this is the in this bag in the ground. Yeah. Oh man. I hope I get this right. Look at that. It's like a big shovel. So, um, I think I'm understanding this right. Um, they move in the trees every two, three years as they're growing so that when they get dug up, they don't go, oh, blimey, what's happening? They're like, oh, this again. Um, that's pretty smart, isn't it? Love that. That was like an ice cream scoop for trees, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm sure, Chris, I would have loved that. You would have loved it. Um, let's show him the video when we go. Yeah. Okay, let's go. And, let's go and get ourselves a couple of olive trees. I think if we buy five big ones, okay. um, and we can plant them sort of around the road, at the closest to the road, yeah, that's and then further idea. away we can plant something else. Um, that well, that'd maybe be a, younger ones. It'll be a good start. Yeah, that's a great one. Yep, good. You ready? Yeah. We've been choosing some. Okay. Put the seats down. Yeah, the seats are down. Okay, are they going to fit? I, I hope so, yeah. I think I'm going to have a, um, a head full of olive leaves, aren't I? You might. <laughs> no chance these are going to fit. I'm afraid I don't believe it. Why don't you go from the front? Push. Th okay. You boys know what you're doing. It is going to be a very leafy journey home. You guys are very optimistic people. Probably this this fourth and last one. Um, so we'll. It's a bit shorter than the rest. Okay, that's it. It's in. All right. Nice. Yay! Let's go and pay. Cool. Right. Um, and then we'll think about that big big tree. <laughs> I got a. I yep. got a feeling that. Choice. Yeah. I got a feeling we might. We might start getting excited about something like that. Um, but let's look at the banks and I don't know. Just check it out. I know it, it would definitely look very beautiful in the middle of that circle, wouldn't it? It would, wouldn't it? Okay. Good. All right, darling. Okay. Well. You'll, you'll be fine. How's the forest over your you'll side? You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Don't tell anybody. We'll be just okay. Is this uh, even legal? Yeah, I think it's just <laughs> fine. I, I remember once um, uh, when I lived in Finland, I went to the sawmill and I filled the car up <laughs> so much with wood that the car was basically leaning on an angle that I drove home with it past the policeman. But the policeman just looked at me and thought, wow, what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the roads were really empty. It was a long time ago. Uh, so, right. Where are you? Where am I? Yeah. 
in the jungle, the mighty jungle. <laughs> the lion sleeps tonight. <laughs> a wimbo -we, a wimbo -we. That used to be Crusoe's favourite song ever. It did, didn't it? Um, when he was a little again. baby. When we were driving around through Africa. We stop were the playing. screaming. We shout for Sawyer. He's in the scream phase, isn't he? He is in the scream phase. Yeah. Right, all right, I'm gonna put the camera down because I need to kind of control the olives. Right, okay. Joao's gonna be stoked. <laughs> okay, so here we are. We have arrived back home. And, well, if olive trees have got anything to go by, this is going to be their home for the next thousand years. Love it. Imagine that. Yeah, so cool. A thousand years. I wonder what the world's gonna be like in a thousand years' time. Oh, I'm looking forward to getting out of here, I won't lie. That was prickly. Oh, I hope they feel loved. All right, here we go. Let's take them out in the same order they went in. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Cool. You got such a big smile on your face, my love. I just like, I like trees, man. I like trees. I like plants. I like flowers. And I know that these trees are going to be here a thousand years. And know? they're going to bring us so much joy, aren't they? That's 10 or 15 years longer than I'm going to be alive. Wow. Look. Sun's coming back out. Brilliant. Taurus just said to me, do you know what would be magic now? <laughs> that trio of old olives. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> I like, okay, what else could you get instead of three trees? And, I mean, if you think about it, what's better than buying three trees with the money, if you can afford it? So, for the same amount of money as three trees, you could fly first class to Bangkok, one seat. Um, you could buy a small car. So, darling, in our lifetime, these trees will always be small young trees do you think about those trees there uh, uh, that we went to see that were like 50 years that old. were 50 years old 50 years old yeah i mean 50 years from now i'll be 85. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you'll be you'll be 95. <laughs> what do you think do they look good trees yeah. okay um so uh, as well, we paid about 40 euros for a tree and they're five years old, the dude said. But there were some trees that were 500 years old that were 5,000 euros. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know, I think it's the best you shop with a file. Holy file. Holy file. It's a lot of olive oil. 